When it comes to the current political climate here in New York, one has to take into consideration not just what is said, but of course, what is being done. Now, this is uh, de Blasio, the blast Cuomo over investigation. Says he should resign or be impeached. Now, this comes very timely with the current changes here in New York for the vaccine passport and how now they will be requiring requiring people to show proof of vaccination and this came comes right at about the exact same time that the allegations sprung up now if you look back when because for quite some time Cuomo was resisting much of Mayor de Blasio's push over regulations about shutting everything down. Even, for example, if you remember, uh, it was both de Blasio and AOC who pushed against Amazon opening up businesses in New York. And Cuomo was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you're costing millions of dollars and thousands of jobs. So I don't think... From what I have seen of Cuomo is that he's a bad person he might not necessarily be the best at what he's doing but I don't think his intent over what's going on is is that he's his demeanor is that he is an inwardly individual uh, individual who is evil I don't think all of these people are with the agenda and when you're not always a little push comes to shove where information comes out and i talked about this in my video talking about um child prawn i'll link the video up top where a lot of these individuals and often it's politicians who get accused of either running some sort of a sex ring or child child uh um you know trafficking etc it's because a lot of these individuals, in essence, get entrapped. They become ensnared, and then they hold this over your head. Very much what you've seen with, like, Epstein. And a lot of these individuals do not go into politics for the purpose of, you know, robbing the people. Many of these individuals go in with good intentions, but what they don't realize is how deep the deep state is. You look at, for example, Trump. If you watched Trump when he was younger, he was very much patriotic if you watch some of he did an interview a very long time ago with oprah and he talked about the exact same thing that a lot of times the politicians get themselves ensnared and that they don't always do what is best for the people and that's one of the things that, that he had talked about in that interview you can find that on youtube and if you watched and listened to the speech he gave he get a he gave a magnificent speech i think it was in 2018 or in 2017 to the u.n where he specifically stated in very big, you know, very, very detailed speech over why America will never be part of the globalist agenda. And of course, it doesn't mean that he's not one of the political elite. There will always be individuals um, in elite positions. It's always been that way throughout life. Now, whether those elites have, at the very least, their own people's their own people's best at heart is to each individual. Some are very, you know, patriotic. Trump, I guess, is would be classified as one of those who is very patriotic. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want necessarily status quo of what's going on, of what has been going on in America. It doesn't mean that he wasn't for socialistic practices. You can just look at his policies and many of the policies that he signed off were very much socialist in their practice even though you know if you listened when he was out there and um campaigning where there was like a, a clip of a woman asking him are women going to be uh you know given the same amount of of income as a man and he said if you work just as hard as a man then you'll learn just as much as a man and of course everybody you know r got all riled up when he said that so it doesn't mean that he's not for certain things that are for the betterment of the country but, there, but you saw a huge change in direction from where he was, which was pushing pro-America, to now being a vaccine pusher, right? He doesn't talk anything about passports and what he did before. 
And it's because you have certain political elites that are a little bit more on the right. And I really don't think in America there really are any right. Because when you look at Republican policies in terms of the laws that they put into place, with whether it's with big businesses, etc., or with socialistic practices, they often sign off on these things because they refuse to cut spending. And that's basically the, the gist of the Republican. The Republican Party is just the party that doesn't want to cut. And the, the, the Democratic Party is the party that constantly wants to create more and more spending. And so who are the American people are going to vote for? I've said this in a previous video, that if they can vote for free stuff, then they're going to vote for free stuff. If someone comes up here and says, we're going to give you uh, better health care, right? We're going to give you better Medicare, better, better Medicaid. You know, your grandma is going to have access to an aid. You know, we're going to create uh, jobs that, uh, that, you know, you get your fair share, et cetera. And we're going to make those evil rich people, we're going to make them pay, right? They tell you all the rhetoric that you want to hear and so the people vote for it. The guy over here who's like, no, if you go out there and you work hard and you put out a good uh a good day's work and you go out there and maybe you start your own business and you dig deep for a couple of years you know it's going to pay off and people look at that and then they look at the social programs and then they walk in the, the the way of social programs because when you give people the choice to vote for free stuff they're just going to vote for free stuff it's really not that difficult and so i don't think in terms of what's going on with uh governor cuomo i don't think that he's a bad individual i just think he's like trump He's put between a rock and a hard place where it's funny, like these allegations only come up at this time. You haven't heard about what's been going on uh, when the allegations first have appeared, which was right about the time where New York opened back up. And people were like, what do you mean New York is going to open? All the lefties, you know, were falling over themselves to talk about how New York was open up, even while places like California were still closed. And even I was very much surprised where basically people received a lot of their ability to move about. You, you saw the mask mandates go away, etc. But now they need to go in a different direction. We need to stimulate that fear once again. And some individuals are just maybe not about that life. And so they get thrown under the bus. An allegation will spring up and you make a choice. Either you're with the program or you're not with the program. It's very much why you saw, it was so weird when Trump, when Trump called for the rally on the 6th, if you had been paying attention to what of the Republicans and the conservatives had been thinking was that this was it. They were like, either Trump's going to release some sort of information. He's going to say, you know, we're pursuing with this investigation. You know, people were really thinking that the country was actually going to experience some sort of a change and that People were getting arrested. You know, you had the whole Q thing going on. And people, if you at least follow on Twitter or on other platforms, you would see that this was very much the talking points of the right, especially when Trump, I think it was an article where he reinitiated um, hangings for treason. And people were like, this is it. Like all these people, finally, they're going to get their comeuppance, right? They thought that, you know, as they say that, what is it, the root, the, the the hens are coming home to roost. They were thinking all these people, the deep state is finally going to get wiped away. But the reality is that didn't happen. And you saw Trump go in a completely different direction, even throwing his base under the bus. Where he basically led his people like sheep to the slaughter. He did not uh, remove everybody. He had the opportunity to uh, people who were supposedly under investigation and got arrested, etc. He didn't release any of these people. And then from that point on, he proceeded to just push for the vaccine nonstop. It was just basically becoming a spokesperson. The very things that are now encroaching upon the right and conservatives, the Republicans, etc., are basically everything that he ignores. He turns a blind eye to all of those things. And it's more than likely because he just wanted to save himself and, of course, his family. He really was not about that life. And in this situation... You have to be all or nothing. You can't, you know, tiptoe in in this scenario and it's and in scenarios like this, you cannot be wishy washy about the direction that you want to go through. Because the left will throw you under the bus. And if need be, like you've seen most recently with some of the um with some of the uh officers who were 
who are at the sixth. What is it? Like four or five of them are have committed suicide. And it's because it's really an all or nothing scenario. Either you're all in and you're willing to go to the war or you're going to lie down and you're going to die. It's like, what is that? That, that expression, the coward dies a thousand deaths, right? But the soldier dies just but once. And it's because when you choose to go that route, you comply and you comply and you comply and you comply and you, you die a little more every single day. Whereas the person who fights back, he dies but one death, which is literally the day that that person dies fighting for their freedom. And this is the climate that many Americans find themselves in. Many people think that well, if we just protest, we'll go out there with our little signs and maybe we'll change some minds. And the answer is no. If people to this day have not been changed to the direction of freedom, they never will be until they become like those people in Cuba who years later have realized we made a bad state in voting for communism. Make no mistake, the people who reside now in Cuba are the communists, just like in Venezuela. Those people are communists and they are experiencing the end result of communism, which is starvation, lack of freedom. You know, in Venezuela, they have gangs that are run by the, the, by the, uh, the political party and they go around and they, they kill people just for the purpose of inciting fear. Don't even think about rising up. They do the same thing in Cuba where the government will put to death uh, people will go missing. You see the same thing in the Communist Party in China, where people who rise up and they just go missing. <clears throat> and so America is going in that same direction. And the only thing that is going to save America is the only thing that saved America during this time period where there was a, a split party. You had people who were pro-slavery and you had people who were more in favor of freedom. And the only, there was no... Uh, there was no you stay over here and, and you stay over there and you do your own thing. That, that wasn't going to work. That wasn't going to work because people were just fleeing and they were like, you need to give us back our slaves. We, we want back our slaves. And the only thing that was able to stop that was a war. And that's the only thing that's going to stop what's coming for many Americans, which is the encroachment of communism. Communism was abated through world war one and world war two but we are again at the precipice of facing a communist regime but now it is in our own land the better part of a hundred years many of these individuals that were allowed to live and this was the mistake the very same mistake our forefathers did when they allowed the southern uh, politicians to live and they said well you know we won the war but let's try to come together in a way of peace and they allowed and for for quite some time slavery still continued in the south because they didn't put these individuals to death, very much like the Bible said. When the nation of Israel went into the promised land, God had told them straightforwardly that if you allow these people to live, they will induce you to serve other gods. You're, in essence, your way of life will eventually be eroded and you will eventually conform to what the nations around you will start to do. And that's exactly what happened. When the nation of Israel didn't listen to God and they allowed all these different thought processes to come into and to reside into their uh, into their neighborhoods and into their country. The result was was that years later and generations later, they found themselves once again falling victim to the very same snares that entrapped the nations that existed there before them. And as a result, they went off into slavery. The same thing holds true today. There's nothing wrong with segregation you saw it very much with black and black americans or the black indigenous people that were here they were doing just fine on their own they had their own businesses they had their own uh, segregated areas of prosperity and it wasn't until they were talked into co-mingling with other individuals that they in essence became slaves again or salaried workers they lost everything because of what had happened. The same will hold true today.